Joining us now is a Fort Hood shooting victim, retired Staff Sergeant Alonzo Lunsford. Mr. Lunsford, thanks a lot uh, for joining us. So what's, you, I mean, are, is this a movie you've seen before? You watch what happened in Boston? Tell me your reaction. Well, it was a shocking reaction initially. And the question I, I asked myself was, how many more times are we going to let events like this happen on U.S. soil? And Sergeant, what do you mean by that? I mean, how, how can we stop events like this happening on American soil? Well, the answer to your question is stop being reactive. Let's start being proactive. We have enough power and enough technology in our grasp where we can stop this from happening well before it's in the initiation phase. Like what? I mean, with it, let's, let's use the Boston Marathon as an example. What should authorities have done before Monday? Well, actually, they should have made sure the area was more secure. And then if you look at what had happened, the brother that was killed, he was already interviewed by the FBI. But there again, interviewing and not really following up with this guy, just giving him a pass. If he is perceived as a threat, treat it as a threat until he's no longer a threat. Hmm. So let me just, um, I, I just want to go back to something because it, okay. I, some of our viewers may not be fully aware. I just want to make absolutely sure and, and clear to our viewers that the Fort Hood shootings of which you were a victim are still not recognized by this administration as an act of Islamic terror. Is that, that is absolutely, that is true? This is true, and even on Thursday, we were in Washington, D.C., and we went to a Senate hearing with uh, Attorney General Air, uh, Holder, and they were talking, they was asking him the reason why the Department of Justice has uh, the thought that this is workplace violence supposed to be a terrorist act, and at the time, uh, Attorney General Holder acted as if he did not know, he did not receive any correspondence to this, and Representative Wolf called him out on this, as well as Represent Representative Rooney at that time. So basically, he was lying. And if you look at the uh, the C-SPAN video, you can look at his face as nonverbal cues that he was like a deer caught in headlights. He did not know what was going on. He had to get the answers from his subordinates that were sitting behind him. You were shot seven times during that. You heard the suspect yell, Allah Akbar. Um, on Monday, the president came out. Well, this week, shortly after the Boston Marathon bombings, the president called it terrorism. The administration called it terrorism. What do you think the distinction is between what happened to you and what happened on Monday in Boston? Both events are terrorist acts. And if our commander in chief and our president called it a terrorist act, okay, then fine. But you have to make sure that it's like that across the board. Don't distinguish between the two. Because the difference between both events is that one, that Major Hussan got his orders from Anwar Alalaki, who was already on our wanted list. So there again, it's a terrorist act, and the FBI has proven that it's a terrorist act, so let's go ahead and call it what it is. And especially since uh, Major Hassan, in effect, called it what it is. I mean, he didn't seem to spend a lot of time hiding his motivations. He was motivated by his perverted religious beliefs. Um, why the hesitance, do you think, to call something what it is? Well, there again, it's, polit it's, it's political correctness, because Major Hussan was one of the first Middle Eastern soldiers to go through the program at Walter Reed. And is it an embarrassment? Yes, it is. However, we need to hold people accountable for things that they are doing that are correct and things they are doing that's incorrect. And bottom line is, if you are in charge of an organization, i.e., the Department of Justice, if you're going to be in charge, be in charge. Do your job. And if you cannot do your job, then move out the way and put someone else in their place that's willing to, to, do, their, to do their job without any prejudice. Uh, Sergeant Lunsford, as I mentioned, you were shot seven times. Um, yes, ma'am. As you know, the victims on Monday uh, are still in the hospital with grievous injuries. Many have lost limbs. What's your message to them today? Being as that they survived, no matter how much pain they're going through, their glass is half full. Do not let their anger consume them. Do not suppress their feelings. They need to talk to someone and the one of the best organizations that is there to help them is the Victims of Violent Crime. The Victims of Violent Crime, that organization will give them a smorgasbord of help that they can receive for the ones that are in the hospital and for the family members. Also, that the community in Boston will reach around and will embrace them and give them all the love and support that they need to have and do not reject this because this is one of the things that a nation will surround them and we will stand firm and stand tall because we can and will survive this. Amen.
That's an inspiring message. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, we really appreciate it. You're welcome. I'll tweet out that organization also, Victims of Violent Crime. Thank you so much.